Hello and welcome to our IELTS Facebook live session. As you can see, here we are. <laughs> uh, it's about the speaking test part one and I'm here with Emma, Hello. who is our IELTS expert. And we're going to talk for a bit, a bit of chit chat uh, while we wait for more people to join us. And um, oh, I can see that lots of people have already started. Oh, joined us already. Um, hello to everyone joining us from all over the world. We've got people coming from France, Gaza, New York City. And um, yeah, feel free to let us know where you're coming from as well. Um, and uh, we can say hello to everybody. Hello from pa to Pakistan. France, Gaza, Egypt. Yes, hello. Um, it's a really sunny day here in Cambridge. And like I said, thank you for joining us. This is the uh, a session on the speaking test part one. I'm here with Emma, who is our IELTS expert. Hi. Um, so, Emma, can you tell us a bit about what the IELTS Speaking Test Part 1 is about? Okay, so IELTS Speaking Test Part, part 1 is um, a, the part of the test that's looking at how you can communicate your opinions mm -hmm. and talk about everyday topics, give information and opinions on everyday topics. Uh, it's a question and answer. It's not the presentation part of the test. It lasts for about four to five minutes and it's uh, backwards and forwards between the examiner and the candidate. Okay. And um, what are we going to go through today? Okay. So today we're going to do, <laughs> it's a bit like a, a lesson with role plays. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to give you a bit of an overview of part one. Uh, we're going to talk a bit about topics, what might come up in, in part one of your out speaking test. And then we're going to do a couple of role plays. I'm going to be playing the role of the examiner and SJ is going to be playing the role of the candidate. Now we're going to do some. Uh, we're going to do a, a, a less good example and then a good example, so you can compare. We're going to talk about ways that SJ could improve her performance, but it is just a role play, okay? Um, and it's something you might do in a class with uh, your teacher, or with your friends. It's certainly something that you can buddy up with someone to do as well. I mean, mm. this is purely a practice session. It's no. It's nothing like test conditions at all. Um, I have to say that I I am a native speaker, and I've never taken the IELTS test, so I'm 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 already a little bit nervous because <laughs> even though I am a native speaker, I I have no idea what's coming either. I have a rough idea, but um, you know we didn't really you know I'm coming into it like you know, anyone else like would. anyone else. Mm. Yeah. So it will be a chance for us to look at um, the kinds of things that everyone can do. To, to really do their, give their best performance on the day. Okay? Okay, so. So should we get started? Yes, let's get started. Okay, so what's, what happens when you first go into your IELTS test is that, I mean, it will be different center by center, but generally the examiner will introduce themselves. You'll come in, sit down in mm -hmm. the room, and um, you'll just get started. There's not really much more to it than that, okay? So you'll see in our role plays, um, you'll see how that introduction works. Um, so you can prepare for part one because there are quite a lot of common topics that come up. This, we have a list here. Okay. That, can you pop the list on for us? Yep. Hang we on a second. Oh, there we are. Okay, so here are some topics that often come up that it's not a full list. And today we'll be talking about some topics that aren't even on this list in our in our role plays. But these are some of the common topics. So you need to be thinking about um, the vocabulary that you need to be able to talk about these topics in general. A lot of people think that part one is going to be just about where you go to school, where you work, where you live. It's true, those things do come up a lot, but it might also be about clothes shopping, about media, about famous people in your country, about um, the last trip you went on. It could be all sorts of everyday topics. And in today's live, we're going to have questions about hometown, we're going to have questions about health, and we're going to have questions about news. So after we've finished, 
you could watch the video again and pause after, during the role play, pause after the questions and then give your own answers instead of SJ's answers if you wanted to use it as a practice tool later on as well. Mm -hmm. You are going to have an opportunity to um, look at my performance and then sort of comment and see what I've done wrong, what I've done right, and then we'll take you through what is wrong and what is right. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what we're going to do. Yeah. All right. So, um, right. Are we going to go? Yeah, it? let's start. Let, we're going to do right. a role play okay. now. Okay. So um, just watch and think about ways that SJ could perhaps improve her performance. Okay. okay. So I'm probably, um, eye contact is probably at the camera. So I'll, you know, that's who I'll direct my answers to, I guess. Yes. If I'm, yes. Okay. I guess so. Yeah, that's probably yeah. the best way to do it. Okay. okay. So remember, I'm the examiner, so I'm going to introduce myself. So hello, my name is Emma. Hello. Can you tell me your full name, please? Um, it's Sarah Jean Holmes. Right. And um, should I call you SJ? Um, yes. Okay. Can I see your ID card, please? Thank you. So for the first part of the test, I would like to ask you some questions about your country. Do you live in the city or the country? Um, city. Okay, and what are some good things about where you live? Good things. Um, uh, lots of shops. Okay, now I'd like to talk about health. Is health important to you? Oh, um, Kang, uh, yes, it's Tian Kang is helpful. Why? Um, it's important. And what is a major health concern in your country? exercise is a health concern okay and can you tell me anything more about exercise i like to exercise for 20 minutes every day it makes me happy um i want to have a good beach body okay thank you very much okay so that was our part one um, some questions with SJ there. Can you put some comments? I can see some people um, um, making comments already. Could you add comments for us to say what she could have done to improve her performance? Because it wasn't the best performance ever. So how could she improve her performance? We've got a comment here. First answer's a bit short. Yeah, okay. Make full sentences which prove your ideas. Very good, yes. What else did she do that could she could improve on? We'll just give you a minute to give us your comments. Um, while we're getting more comments in, I can see there are some questions about band scores, and I mm -hmm. think this is an opportunity uh, that we are not actually going to talk about um, band scores today. Uh, we're, today we're specifically talking about the part one of the speaking test. Okay, we've got someone. Oh good, we've got lots of um, lots of comments about expanding answers. Okay. Inappropriate detail. Yes, okay, good. The comments are coming in quite fast, actually. Yeah, without um, very long pauses. Okay. Yeah. Explain every yes or no. Okay. Elaborate. Need eye contact. Nice. That's very good. Give more details about your answers and let the examiner understand you clearly. Excellent comment. Do not pause a lot. Lovely. 
So you guys already know your stuff. So here's some um, here's some ideas that we had about how she could improve. So can we pop that slide up, do you think? Yep. Okay, so better body language. As some of you have pointed out, uh, I, I wasn't giving a lot of eye contact. So that, that is definitely a, a good thing. So um, using more vocabulary, longer sentence structures. Mm. Speak slower. Actually, this in this case, you didn't rush. I didn't you, rush. You spoke quite slowly, actually. But it's so often people will rush when they're nervous. They'll speak very quickly indeed. So you just have to try to keep the, the pace at the right speed. Use only English. So we had a bit of Mandarin in your answers. I did, yes. Um, we, you can't have uh, any scores for foreign language answers. Is there another slide to go with that one? Yes. Okay, speak a little louder, yes. If the examiner cannot hear you, it's impossible for them to give you a score. Mm -hmm. Make answers longer. Now, lots and lots and lots of you have got this, have put this in the comments. You're absolutely right. So you need to um, expand on your answers, but make sure that it's relevant. Yes. Okay. So answer the questions asked, not give a memorized speech. So I don't know if you noticed when we talked about health and exercise, until SJ was speaking about her own exercise routine, she wasn't very fluent. And then suddenly she was quite fluent. Unfortunately, because it was a memorized answer, it wasn't completely relevant to the topic we were talking about. Okay. And so that's it's not a good idea to memorize paragraphs about topics. It's a very good idea to prepare vocabulary. It's a very good idea to prepare, to, to find questions about yeah. lots of different questions on that topic mm -hmm. and prepare your ideas, but not to memorize. Certainly one of the things that I found, um, I'm going to do that so we're back in the screen. Um, one of the things I did find with this exercise was, um, when you ask, you know, what kind of place do you live in? Do you live in a city? Or for some reason, I had to think really hard. Do I live in the city or do I live in the country? It's it's so one of those things. Maybe one way you can prepare is you know knowing what what where you come from, mm -hmm. or rather deciding what you you you're gonna say really, whether it's a city or or a country. There aren't any wrong answers. Again, we're back into the world of nobody's going to call no. your mom or your dad or your teacher and say, is that true? Yeah, Does she yes. really live there? But telling the truth is always easier. Yes. But it's not essential. Yes. Um, but having good grasp of vocabulary around those topics, like hometown, that's that one comes up all the time. So if you have a lot of vocabulary, mm -hmm. countryside, city, um, population, mm -hmm. all sorts of, you know, that your neighbourhood, what leisure facilities there are nearby, what uh, what you like about where you live, what you don't like about where you live. Um, if it's big, how it compares to a small town. If it's small, how it compares to a big town. Yeah. If you prepare all of those ideas in your mind, then in advance, you'll probably be able to manage the question more easily. Yes, I have to agree. <laughs> Okay, so what next? Okay, so... Oh, actually, before we do yes. that, we should say, um, for those of you who have just joined us, this is an, a live session on the IELTS speaking test part one. So don't worry if, you're, if you've come in late, this will be posted on our Facebook page, so you'll get to see it right from the beginning. Uh, what we've just done is we've given an overview of the speaking test part one, mm -hmm. what, what it's about, what to expect. And also uh, we've just done a demonstration of a not so good answer to the questions. So now we're going to do a second question, which uh, so Emma is acting as an examiner and I am acting as a candidate. And we're doing a bit of role play here. Mm -hmm. And so but so like you would in a class uh, with your teacher or with a friend. And certainly this is something that you can replicate um, with your friends or at home yes. as well. I've just noticed a question that can I okay, very quickly yes. answer from Cherry Cherry. It says, I'm too nervous in front of the examiner. Sometimes 
I cannot catch his questions. Okay. Well, I think a lot of people feel like that. And you can say, pardon, or can you repeat the question? I didn't catch the question. It's perfectly okay to ask for the question to be repeated. If you don't catch it, just ask. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch the question. Can you repeat it? Yeah. Okay. So I hope that helps, Cherry Cherry. Okay. Okay, so we're going to do another example now. We'll start from the beginning again. So it's all about confidence. When you walk into the room, it's about eye contact, body language, a smile, um, just show that you are here and you mean business and going to get the job done. Right, shall okay. We, shall we turn, shall we turn just around? A little, just a little bit more. There yeah. A bit easier. Yeah, okay. Go. All right. Hello, my name's Emma. Hi, my name is Sarah. Can you tell me your full name, please? It's Sarah Jean Holmes. Would you like me to call you Sarah or SJ? SJ would be great. Okay. Can I see your ID card, please? Oh, okay. There you go. Thank you. Okay, for the first part of the test, let's talk about your hometown or village. What kind of place is it? My hometown is a city, but it's not quite a city. It's called a city, even though it's a very small place. Um, a lot of people believe it's called a city because it has a cathedral, um, but actually the queen in this country decides what a city is. <laughs> So what's the most in, the most interesting part of your village? I'm sorry, your city. city. Yes. Your city. Well, the most interesting part of it is that a long time ago, it used to be mostly underwater. That part of the world is actually known as the fens. And um, so it looks nothing like it is now. Most of it is actually boggy and um, little hillocks. And there are lots of eels. And the way people got around was on sticks. Okay. So yeah. what kind of jobs do the people in your city do? Well, back in the day, they would have been mostly um, eel catchers. So they would fish for eels and sell them on in the next town or in Cambridge or in the big cities. But nowadays, you know, uh, a while back, they decided as the city grew that they wanted to have more people living there. So it wasn't very practical to have all this boggy things. So they've um, drained the fence, so it's all dry. So mo it's mostly a lot of farms out there now. And would you say it's a good place to live? Oh, yeah, I would say it's a, definitely a good place to live. It's not too crowded. It hasn't got a lot of tall buildings. It's not very busy. Uh, it has lots of green spaces. And I would say that it's a very good place to bring up children. Okay, let's move on to talk about newspapers. Do you often read newspapers? I don't read newspapers as much as I used to. Um, these days you can find the news out on the internet quite often. And so I get most of my news on the internet through different news sources and not just newspapers. Um, back in the day, I used to read broadsheets, which are sort of more international and national newspapers. And nowadays I can get those on the internet. And um, yeah, I often read things like the New York Times. And uh, do you prefer to read local or international news? International news, international definitely news. international news. I like seeing what's going on in the rest of the world. You know, you, mu you get a much broader perspective of life outside your own town, your own city, your own country. Okay, thank you. Okay. So uh, let's have some comments on what you thought was different, better, about that role play that SJ did there. Oh, that was quite nerve wracking, actually. <laughs> I just, I, I, I was so nervous because you know all you guys are watching me as well. That's quite scary. All right, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Nice conversation. Thanks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, what was better? What like if you compare the last one and this one? Obviously. This was a much it was a native speaker level conversation. It was a very high. She would have scored very highly. I, we're not allowed to give band scores here, but um, she would have scored very highly for the second one. She, if we ask examiner to repeat, oh, very natural, expressing and logical answers. Good try, girls. Thank I'm gonna, you. I'm gonna put that up there. Thank you very much. Great acting. <laughs> Oscar's coming our way. I think. <laughs> Quite friendly talking with the examiner. Shows your confidence and your English skills. 
Exactly right. That's what we want. We want confident, relaxed, just showing the best English you can do. Don't forget, leave your nerves at the door. The examiner wants you to do well. They're not there to pick up faults. They're looking for ways to give you as many marks as possible, okay? So they want you to do well. I have to say they're relaxing, quite tough. Even though mm. I am a native speaker, that I still found that quite stressful. You know, how do you sort of relax? How do you, how would you? Deep breaths <laughs> and lots Deep of practice breaths. so that it's not a surprise. And of yeah. course you're going to be nervous. You're taking a test. Of course you'll be nervous. Nobody's saying you're going to go in and be like, yeah, I'm fine. Be chill. Yeah. yeah, but it, it is a test, but you have to try your best. Uh, you will, you will speak like her, Julia. <laughs> yes, you will. I think that was above an eight. I think you're probably right, Rakesh. Okay, so let's have a look at, at uh, let's have a look at the next slide, shall we? Yep. What she did well. So she extended her answers well. She talked about the history of her town. That's something that's very easy to prepare in advance, actually, because it's quite unique. If your this, if your hometown comes up, there's every chance you'd be able to talk somehow about the history of it. So talking about the jobs that people used to do, the fact that the land used to be used for different purposes, uh, the size of, of the city being small, those interesting facts. Those are all things that are quite easy to prepare in advance. And to, to so if the topic comes up, you've got lots of interesting extra things to add to your answer. And I tell you a secret, that is not my hometown. Oh, and she was, <laughs> see, I'm not going to call her mum and find out. <laughs> okay what else have we got good body language and eye contact so important it's so important you know when you meet someone new if they're all nervous and looking at the floor and they don't want to look at you and they don't want to talk to you you, you kind of you think oh okay what did i do wrong right, so it's okay. like that for the examiner as well of course they're going to mark your english not your body language but you'll notice that sj used her hands a lot when she was speaking she was very natural there's i did Yes. Oh, I use my hands a lot. You have to okay. watch the video and see. I'm going to have do to. this and this and this. Really? And oh, that's wow. fine. It's great. And it's engaging. And the examiner will, you know, they're there all day listening to people. Make your exam be the one that's really interesting and fun for them. Yeah. I mean, right. I, I, I talked about the eels and the land being underwater and things because those are things, stories that I heard about, about it. So it's just, it was just interesting stuff. Yeah. And um, what have we got next? So it uh, showed a range of vocabulary and grammar. Yeah, we talked about very different things. Good speed and volume, of course, as a native speaker. Yes. It's very easy for you to do yes. these things. And I understand that it's not as easy if you're not a native speaker. Far from it. But you can try. You can be conscious of the speed that you're speaking. You can be conscious that if you're too loud or too quiet, it's a little bit awkward for the person listening. I actually was afraid that I was, I might have been speaking too fast, mm. actually. Um, but, but you're right, you know, you, you, once you're conscious of that, you can be more aware of, you know, how quickly you're speaking and maybe slow down or speed up, mm. you know, just be aware of what you're, you're saying. Um, okay, so that's back to us. Oh, actually, let's uh, have the slide up and us as well. Okay, uh, have we got any more on there? No, that's it. Um, I had saw um, uh, about the, is there a difference between the general, there, there we go, down, down, down a little bit. Is there a difference uh, between the general and academic speaking? Uh, no difference. It's the same test. Okay. So the only difference with the general and the academic is the reading and the writing. Listening and speaking is the same. Okay, I hope I'm right. <laughs> If I'm right well, with that information, that but no, I'm sure. I'm sure that's it. Okay. But the speaking test is definitely the same. Okay. Is a, adding personal experience about something asked productive? Um, if it's relevant and it extends your answer and it shows a range of vocabulary, then yes. I think if you feel comfortable talking about something personal, that will make it easier for you to speak. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's all about um, 
having as natural a conversation as possible. So when you, when you talk to your friends, you don't just say yes, no, yes, no. You add information, don't you? You give more. You tell the stories, okay? Lots of people asking what her band would be. It would be very high, okay? <laughs> that was that last example was would be a very high scoring for part one. Who knows what her part two and part three might be like, but for part one, there were very good answers. I don't know. We shall find out. Um, can we use the word. words like you, we, are while giving the answer to the examiner? Of course. If they're appropriate in the sentence, there's no reason not to. Yes. Okay. All righty. Okay, so... Oh, what's this ability to do? Uh, I think that's a that's an oh, it's an yeah, it's an opinion that people hold. Yes. Okay, well, how can I ensure academic speaking formal language? Um, can we show this one? Yeah. You don't have to be too too formal, um, but don't talk talk to the examiner as if they were your teacher. OK, that was the level of formality that you're looking for. It doesn't need to be um, very formal, like a, an academic piece of writing or a scientific presentation or something. But it does need to be more formal than if you were just in a coffee shop with your friends. So think of uh, how you would speak to a teacher or a professor at university. That's that's basically the level of formality that they're looking for in the test. So it, it can be you can use some colloquial language. You can use some idiomatic language, not too much. Um, but you don't have to be incredibly formal. But I would you say that we should avoid using slang? Yes. OK, um, so I guess examples of slang would be um, OK is OK. Mm, I would say. But um, like I kind of like I want to I, I would avoid that too. that, that kind right of, so I want to rather yes. than I want to mm. right. you want to show the examiner that you know what the right grammar is okay otherwise they'll say well they didn't really know how to use that grammar that structure properly okay okay so remember they're they're looking for good things good things from you well we are going to answer all your questions at the end because now what we're going to do is we're all going to give you some tips on how to prepare for the part one of the speaking test okay all right so and we have lots of tips and i'm just gonna hide this here okay so um find someone to study with so you need a study buddy if you can find each other online mm -hmm. you know you might find someone in the comments here today who's also preparing. They say, I'm looking for someone to practice with. And you could do it on Skype or you could do it on WhatsApp or something. But um, you could take a, a list of questions and take turns being examiner and candidate. You just have to Google IELTS speaking test part one example questions. And you'll come up with all kinds of pay web pages with all kinds of questions. And it's just about practicing, practicing, practicing and getting used to um, getting that vocabulary you've prepared about all the different topics, bringing it together to answer different questions. OK, so talk to yourself in the mirror, talk to yourself in the mirror. So that sounds crazy, but, you know, <laughs> make eye contact with yourself. Look at yourself. Acknowledge that you're speaking a different language. Look at how your face looks. Look at how you do you open your mouth. Are you mumbling? Are you um, do you look confident? Do you look embarrassed? Uh, probably feel strange to start with. But uh, I think if you keep at it, it will get better. <laughs> um, where are we? I've got the wrong slides here. There we no, go. We're record yourself answering questions and listen critically. Yeah. I'm sure most of you have got a smartphone in your pocket right now. In fact, you're probably watching us on a smartphone. So use the record function. It doesn't even have to be a video, but just you just look at a question and then record yourself answering it. And then later on, listen back and say, well, what vocabulary did I use that was good? What grammar did I use that was good? Mm -hmm. Was I too fast? Was I too slow? What's my accent sounding like? 
Accent's not as much of a big deal as everyone thinks. So long as you can be understood, it doesn't really matter if you sound English or American or Canadian. Everybody strives to have a native accent, but it's not essential to get a good mark. So long as you, the examiner can understand what you're saying. OK. okay. Um, Prepare vocabulary ideas for the common topics. Oh. Oh, yeah, we're on the next one. Sorry, SJ, I'm ahead of you. Yes. So, yeah, those lists of common topics, again, if you Google, you'll find lists of common topics or you'll find lists of questions grouped together in common topics. By preparing those answers, by thinking about those topics, you can do some uh, kind of uh, diagrams, spider diagrams with different topics and different vocabulary. But do prepare. Do do get your head around some new words or some common words yes. and collocations. Yeah. What have we got next? Review language of comparison and opinion. That's okay. useful because they're often asked, what do you think about? Uh, why is that? Can, can What's it like um, for your hometown compared to the city that you're taking the exam in, for example? Um, the past from your childhood to now, how have things changed? There are often questions about uh, comparisons. And don't prepare answers, don't memorise answers, like SJ did with the exercise one. Yeah. Don't memorise answers. The examiner always knows. It never quite fits and you do yourself a disservice. Memorizing answers, that's that's a bit tricky, I think, because you're not you're not gonna be answering the question correctly. Are no. You? No. Um, and the last one is practice practice practice, 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 practice. And if you want to watch examples of real exams, then yes. we've got a link for you, I hope. Yes, we do. I'm just getting it up now. Uh, on our YouTube channel. You can find lots of um, videos of real exams with real examiners and real candidates with their band scores doing different parts of the test. Okay. So I've I've just posted the link up to the YouTube playlist where we've got all the uh, speaking test samples on IELTS. So that's our list of preparation tips, and we'll try and post those up as soon as possible. Um, and um, we'll put that in an album on the website and then you can have them. Right. So now we can talk about... Can we just talk about Miguel Angel yeah. Jimenez there? Why does it look like I need to prepare myself to the test itself rather than my English skills? This looks like how good are you taking the IELTS rather than how good is your English? Okay. Point taken. But this session is how to improve your IELTS performance. So your band score that you get will correspond to the level of your English. But um, to get the best score you can, like in taking any test, it's important that you know what to expect in that test. And that's what we're here today mm -hmm. is to help you understand what's in the test. And your English level is something that everybody needs to always work on. Even myself as an English teacher, I'm always working on my English. So that it's not that we're saying... You need to prepare for IELTS rather than improving your English skills. You need to do both simultaneously. Yes. Okay. So we're just doing, if you're a runner and you want to run a marathon, you have to prepare for a marathon, not just run. Yes. Um, and so that's all we're doing here. Okay. I hope that helped you. Okay. So we're now at the point where we're, we're um, going to answer some questions on part one of the speaking test. Um, as we've said throughout the session, we are not going to tackle any specific questions regarding band scores, because unfortunately, that sort of advice mm. is very particular to you mm. as, as the person. If we don't know who you are, we don't know the circumstances that you... It's it, impossible it's for us to give constructive to... help, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, right, let's have a look at it. what was the question, Bikal? We've got lots and lots of questions. I did see somebody write something. Uh, could we say it, tell them something about part two? We are planning to do another yes. two how-to videos like this, another two sessions. Um, the next one will be on part two, mm -hmm. and then the following one will be on no, part, part three. three. So we thought we'd break it down into manageable chunks. Yeah. Um, ah, this did a lot. A number of you have asked this question, which is, uh, which 
has come up here, which is how to handle topics that we have no experience or have never done anything relevant to that topic. So, for example, I think somebody, somebody asked, asked about museums. museums earlier. Earlier. Yeah. Uh, well, if, for example, let's take the example of museums. Um, you are being asked about your opinion. Mm -hmm. So in part one, um, the topics in an IELTS exam are very carefully prepared to hopefully be accessible to the majority of people. So even if, for example, with a museum, you haven't been to a museum, you can still, you still know what a museum is and you can still have an opinion about whether they're useful to society. Um, you can say, I've not been to a museum, but I would love to go to see the great paintings of the whatever, whatever like region or... Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, I'd love to go and see dinosaur fossils. I'd love to, and not only will that show vocabulary, but you'll be using a wider range of grammar as well because you'll be, you know, you'll be showing your use of, I would love to, if I had the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay, second conditional, third conditional. You can, any question you, you can turn to your advantage. So don't worry if you can't exactly answer the question. You can just say, well, I don't have experience of that, but I think... Mm -hmm. or, you know, I haven't been to a museum, but I have. we do have an art gallery in my hometown, mm -hmm. or I have always, I've looked at museum websites online, mm -hmm. and I'm very interested in one day, if I get the opportunity, visiting the Museum of Modern Art in New York, or, you know, the Guggenheim or something. That's quite a good answer. And what if you have no interest in museums? At you all. say I have no I'm not interested in museums I find them a waste of money mm -hmm. and a waste of time and I think that people should spend their time doing more more sporting activities or so, so studying as, or you know so, so even though you um, don't like the topic like say museums also even if you don't like museums you, you can expand on that and say why you don't like museums and or why no. you've never had the chance to or, go oh why you've never I, had like, the in to my go. home country that we don't have museums or there are the, the nearest museum to my home is 200 miles away and i don't have the time at the weekends i'm busy working or something you know and i think the thing to remember is you don't have to tell the truth yeah <laughs> i mean you could say you know i I've never been to a museum because there isn't one nearby, which is not necessarily the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, there could be one next door. You just haven't had an opportunity to just go up and go to it. You don't necessarily have to tell the truth. Okay. Emma, what if part one goes well, but part two and three is average? How much can affect total band score? Okay. The examiners are trained to um, take, they'll be, as they're listening to you, they'll be, uh, adjusting that they've got, a, you know, they'll be thinking about all of the different elements that they're marking and they will be um, adjusting accordingly and they'll take a kind of average of the whole test. So if you've done well in part one and average in the others, then that but doing well in part one will help you, but you'll get the score that you get. You know, it, it's not, they're not marked separately. So they take your performance as a whole. Okay, uh, here's a is it okay to use idioms and phrases in speaking? It is okay, but our advice is always to use them cautiously and um, and and sparingly, so not too much. Idioms are one of those things, and I'm, I feel like a broken record. I feel I'm always saying the same thing to people. Idioms are brilliant for making language colourful. They're fantastically fun. And it's great if you learn, you love idioms and you can understand them to understand native speakers. But they're notoriously difficult to use correctly. Even okay. native speakers get it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, the number of times I've heard people actually saying, using an idiom when they actually mean something else. Yes. Yeah. So unless you're very, very certain that you're using it correctly, I would avoid it just in case. Okay, somebody has just called me out on the uh, how to be confident when you're making up a story or telling a lie. Oh, well, I'm with you, actually. <laughs> I think it's e much easier to be confident telling the truth. the truth. So where possible, tell the truth. 
But in an emergency, you can always lie. Oh, God, yeah. It doesn't say very much about my character. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm making stuff up as we go along. Um, the questions should be general enough that most people could have got a good answer. Okay? Okay. Um, I think we're almost Can out we of answer time. slowly in the test? Yes, of course you can answer slowly in the test, but not so slowly that the examiner thinks you've stopped speaking. But slow yes. is fine. Slow is fine. Ah, that's an interesting question. My question is about traditional food names. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some. So in his language, it's or her language, it's. Um, there is something called sag in my language. Should I use the same name or translate it in English? Use the same name. That's the name of the food. That's the name of the food. Use the sag and then explain what that is. Okay, so, oh, in our in my country, we have a traditional food. My favorite food, for example, my favorite dish may be sag. You make it, it's made from X, Y, and Z ingredients, cooked in this way, that way, and the other. My mother, my grandmother, my grandfather makes the best sag I've ever tasted in my life. You know, it's, but they don't worry about translating yeah. like that. It's a bit different from when I use the Chinese word for health. Yes. Because health is not the name of a food or mm. a thing it's not you know it's a general yeah. word yeah um so yeah so that's different yeah yeah um i don't have the english speaking tone like you will it affect my ielts speaking test oh i think we said before about it, accents. accents so long as yes. you can be understood and there's not um what they're looking for is what's called l1 interference so they're looking for um, where your accent or your word order or um, your your structure of your sentences is affected strongly by your ne your mother tongue so strongly that in English it's hard to understand. But um, accent itself, you don't get extra marks for having a British accent. That's you have to be understood, but in whatever accent you have, as long as you can be understood clearly. Okay, we're going to answer two more questions okay. and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, so is it necessary to use complex vocabulary? Um, not if it's going to be unnatural. Okay, it, it, you'll notice that a native speaker doesn't use that complex vocabulary. They use quite simple vocabulary in the, when, they're, when they're talking. Yeah, off um, the top of your head. Yeah. yeah. Oops, I just used an idiom. Um, it's, yeah, so you don't have to use complex vocabulary, but if you learn some more advanced vocabulary for the different topic areas, and then if it isn't, if it if it's appropriate to the answer, to use it. But don't try, don't go. Oh, I've got these five amazing words that I've learned, and I'm going to get them in, however, I can, because I'll get marks for those five amazing phrases or something. If it's relevant to the question, fantastic. If not then just simple, simple, correct English is fine too. Okay. What's that? During the test is vocabulary more essential or fluency of English? They're both important. They both come under different categories in the marking scheme. And so they both, they both matter. Try to do the best you can in both areas of fluency and vocabulary. Okay. Okay, and I'm afraid that's all the time we have left for today. Um, thank you very much for joining us. And if I can find the, uh, it's fine. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Um, we you. hope that this session has been um, very, very helpful to you. And um, thank you for all your questions as well. I'm sorry we couldn't get to every single question. Um, that was a lot. You know, we can't possibly answer all of them. Otherwise, we'd be here for quite a long time. And I'm afraid um, we've run out of time in this room. So um, do join us for our next session where we're going to talk about part two. Mm -hmm. Now, what's part two about? That's the presentation. Okay. For, for those of us who don't know anything about the test, do tell us what is the presentation. So you get given a topic. You have one minute to prepare. Right. And then you have to speak for one to two minutes on the topic. That sounds horrifying. Yes. Do you think we should make SJ do it again? Shall I surprise her with a question? No. And we'll see how well she does with no preparation. Oh, my God. Thumbs up if you think it's a good idea. <laughs> Let me see. Are we, are we serious about this? We are, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Okay. All right, then. So 
See you all, all right. soon. See you all soon for the next session. Thank you.